Out of all the fantastic scenes that we've witnessed in One Piece over the years, I think it's this one right here that for some reason sticks out to me as different. An explosion, a black hat gliding through the snow, and then a painful silence that pierces like an icy lance. When the Straw Hats arrive in this quiet, snowy world of Drum Island, it's a stark contrast to the hectic, heated Baroque work saga that's going on around it. And so the entire arc feels like a kind of narrative island in the flow of larger events taking place around it. It's a beautiful and tragic story of an incompetent but kind-hearted doctor taking in a young reindeer that has been rejected by both its herd and the humans after gaining intelligence, looking for nothing more than acceptance and love. It's a story that works perfectly fine without any knowledge about Devil Fruits, the Grand Line, and even the Straw Hats. And yet, despite this isolation, I believe that the climax of the scene is not only one of the most emotional, but also one of the most meaningful moments for the overall narrative. After all, it introduces one of the major themes in the story. <laughs> Over the course of the scene, we see the relationship between the Dr. Hiroluk and the Reindeer Chopper slowly grow. As we learned right at the beginning of the scene, both of them are outcasts, Hiroluk being seen as a quack doctor by the people of the country, and Chopper being rejected by both humans and reindeers for his mixed appearances. While the old doctor is quite satisfied with his isolated life and his quest to heal his country, the young chopper is at an absolute low point in his life, humiliated, hurt and abandoned. It's in this terrible state that Hiroluk finds the shot reindeer bleeding in the snow outside the village after he tried to befriend its people. And it's at this moment here that with every story beat, we slowly start to witness his circumstances change for the better. Hirolog does not abandon him as the other humans did, but tries to treat him, at which the traumatized and terrified boy attacks him. Due to his kind-hearted nature, Hirolog doesn't give up however, and after he strips himself completely naked in the biting cold to prove that he has no weapons with him, Chopper allows him to bring him home and treat him, experiencing care and empathy for the very first time. It takes exactly three days for the reindeer to reveal that he can actually talk, frightened to be chased away as a monster and freak again. Hiroluk, however, knows exactly how to take away that fear. <laughs> and so he gives Chopper the feeling of being normal and accepted for the very first time in his life. For the next year, the two of them develop a sort of father and son relationship, and Hiroluk shares his dream with the slowly healing Chopper, to free the country suffering under the tyranny of its ruler Wapol, who is monopolizing all of the doctors. He shares a story about his time as a pirate and how he was able to heal a sickness that was believed to be incurable by seeing cherry blossoms in a country far to the west. <laughs> This experience changed his life, and the mysterious power of the cherry blossoms became an important part of his persona. This is not only wonderfully symbolized in this panel here, but Hirolog also shares his very own Jolly Roger with Chopper that carries cherry blossoms as well. It is one of the main symbols of the arc that also appear on Dr. Koreha's shirt and even in the shape of Chopper's hooves. And so Hiroluk ignites a burning admiration for both medicine and pirates in Chopper, and over time he manages to warm the reindeer up more and more. <laughs> and he even gives his very first present to Chopper, a big pink hat, similar to the one he wears himself. However, after roughly a year of growing to love each other, in a heartbreaking scene, Hiroluk suddenly kicks Chopper out. What at first sight seems like another betrayal quickly turns out to be an act of kindness, as Hiroluk has once again caught an incurable disease and doesn't want Chopper to see the only person he ever had in his life 
to die before his eyes. Chopper, however, overhears a conversation he has with Dr. Koreha, the only other doctor on the island outside of the king's control. And so Chopper sets out on a dangerous journey to look for a mushroom that he found in one of the medical books, during which he has to face his old hurt and past. Finally, he returns to Herolog, heavily injured but with the mushroom in his hand. Upon seeing him, Herolog embraces him in a tight hug and is relieved that his son is safe. Happily, he consumes the mushroom that Chopper has brought him, and after saying goodbye to Chopper, quickly hurries off towards Korea's house. Here we enter the climax of the scene. We learn that the mushroom that Chopper has found actually contained a deadly poison, as he misinterpreted the skull symbol next to it for the all-powerful symbol of pirates that Hirolook had shown him. And so, after finding out what had happened, Korea hurries to find Chopper and tell him the truth, and that kindness alone can't heal people. <laughs> Hero Look, meanwhile, heads to the castle, where the king has set a trap for him by declaring that all of the country's doctors have fallen ill. Finally, he arrives at the castle, and he realizes that it was a trap all along, and that all the doctors in the country were actually fine. Already being close to death, he breaks down in tears of joy at the news and holds one of the best speeches in the story. <laughs> And before Walpole can order his men to kill him, he blows himself up. I'm pretty sure that this might have been the very first time that I've ever shed a tear watching an anime. This scene here just hits home differently for me in a number of ways. Absolutely love winter and the snow, and so the quiet and peaceful design of Drum Island as a location already creates an almost friendly ambient for me. And the constant snowfall carries a sense of calming serenity, but also of quiet, inexorable death. And the way that Oda opens the flashback with Luffy about to punch Wapple in the face and ending with the punch landing is a great use of portraying the flow of time, while at the same time making for an incredibly satisfying ending after seeing the fruits of Wapple's narcissistic character, who I by the way believe to be the only thing about this arc that isn't really good. Just imagine a villain of the likes of Doflamingo or Crocodile in this context, and the entire plot becomes even better than it already is. But this scene is a lot more than just a beautifully crafted backstory for the next Straw Hat. Just as Blackbeard's speech on Jaya introduces us to the concept of dreams, Hero Looks introduces us to another major theme of One Piece, that is closely connected to dreams. The concept of inherited will is one of the most important underlying drivers in Oda's story that he has fantastically integrated into Hirolok's character. Throughout the show, there have been many characters who said they wouldn't die and then did so. Gold Roger's final words to Rayleigh, for example, before turning himself in were, and Ace told Luffy that he would never die as well. And so, when Hero Look holds his famous speech, despite all the emotions it carries, it does sound a bit abstract at first. However, as we learn throughout the story, this is more than just a mere metaphor. And actually, you can ask yourself this question in real life. When does a person die? Can you pinpoint the exact moment? Doctors have declared people dead who they then were able to revive, so it's not a simple matter of chemistry or biology. This may sound like a quite philosophical approach to this video, but remember, the theme of a story is the underlying moral argument that the author wants to make about the world. Some of you might think of this meme here right now. However, as anyone who pursues a career as a writer will tell you, great authors that create great stories do think about this stuff. 
a lot. And so, if inherited will is a major theme of the story, it does have a deeper meaning for Oda. And so, what this question really explores is not to determine when someone is dead, but rather what it means to live. And in Oda's eyes, to live is to act, and to act is to impose your will on the world and cause change. We even say that a joke is dead when it no longer leaves any impact on us. A person is the same way. When a person is forgotten, then their will no longer exists in this world. But as long as they and the dreams and ideals they had are remembered, their will will continue to influence the world and cause change through those that have inherited their will by remembering. And so I believe that Hero Look reveals the true power of this theme in the story to us. Inherited will keeps people and their dreams alive. けど、as you can see, the concept of inherited will is everywhere in the story, and Luffy as the main character is of course the prime example of this. The straw hat he wears once belonged to Roger, but upon his death he gave it to Shanks. With it he passed on his will and responsibility as a pirate, fighting for freedom and his dreams. And so through Shanks, Roger's lesson still changed the world. And Shanks has passed on that hat to Luffy. That act has motivated him to become a pirate just like Shanks. Luffy has absolutely no idea where the hat actually comes from. He knows next to nothing about Roger. But he's still doing the things that Roger would want him to do because Shanks passed his will and by extension Roger's will onto Luffy. Roger isn't dead. He's living on in Luffy and Shanks and the entire era that he has created. The power of keeping people alive through their will is the main drive of the story, not only for our heroes, but also for the main antagonists. Because the world government is very well aware of this power and does everything it can to stop it. It's exactly why they planned on cutting off the life feed of Ace's execution, not just to kill Ace the man, but to kill Ace the ideal. And it's also the reason why they seek to destroy the true history, the will of the people from the Void Century passed down for hundreds of years. <laughs> Whoever the person was that has passed on his will until today, he is still alive, as his dreams and ideals still live on. And it is this scene here, in the snowy world of Drum Island, that this concept is already introduced by Oda. And so, not for nothing is Dr. Kureha the very first character in the story to reveal Roger's true name and to mention the will of D. What really rounds off the scene and the Drum Island arc overall then is that Chopper inherits will as well. One on the other hand by Dr. Kureha, who's able to heal the body, but is too cold to heal the heart. And on the other hand, of course, Dr. Hero Look, who is able to heal people's hearts, but is not skillful enough to heal the body. Chopper inherits both of their wills by striving to become a doctor that can heal any sickness, no matter of what sort. And here the circle closes, as this inherited will is beautifully symbolized by cherry blossoms. 
Hirolog's life work of producing cherry blossoms on the Winter Island to heal people's hearts is made possible by Kureha, who not only wore them in his memory on her shirt, but also had mass produced the powder for him, showing that she believed in his dream all along. And so, when Luffy defeats Wapol and frees the country from its metaphoric physical illness, the country's cold heart in the end is healed by seeing the cherry blossoms bloom in the night, leading to political revolution and a better future in a country that will now carry the symbol in its heart and even in its name. <laughs> And so, in the end, while on the surface this scene may appear to be nothing more than a simple short story that is beautifully heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time, it actually encompasses the entire theme of the One Piece story, making it not only so much more meaningful, but touching something deeper inside of us, where we can't help but be touched by feelings of joy, sorrow, relief and nostalgia at the sight of cherry blossoms. Because above all, they remind us that people only die when they're forgotten. And people's dreams never die. The ultimate antagonist of inherited will and people's dreams are of course the Tenryobito and their tyrannical rule of the world. And so I think there is a scene here that we do have to discuss as well. <laughs> And so we'll be looking at that in the next video. Thanks guys, peace.